be looking at three emails, types of emails that really will help you grow your own business. Before we uh, get started with the session, I just briefly uh, want to share a little bit about myself. Every week there are many new faces joining our uh, community and uh, not everyone knows who is this person uh, and what is she um, and why is she sharing all this about uh, art business. My name is Sonia Small here, originally from Cape Town, South Africa, live in Baden, which is not too far from uh, Amsterdam and I've uh, been here for many, many years. I love seeing artists succeed. Art is important. Art is so important. You are important. What you have to say is important. Creativity is such, it's the lifeblood and the flow of everything. Can you imagine a life without creativity? With, you know, just looking at nature and with music and with all that beautiful literature and inspiration of color and prints and, you know, it's just all over the place. Life, it, it, we have, live a creative life. And uh, you are an artist. This is an amazing profession, whether you are hoping, secretly wondering, how you can turn your creativity into some kind of revenue uh, stream or maybe you are already earning an income with your creativity it is an exciting journey it's not an easy journey because i've read surveys and i've spoken to many artists also as a coach it's probably the most challenging profession that you have chosen but it's exciting and there's a lot possible especially with this online space so yay to you for being and embracing your creativity and if you're still on the fence wondering if it's possible go for it follow your creative passions follow your dream of being that working artist because there really is a lot possible just need to get those structures and that is what i'm passionate about so follow the space and join in and see what's uh, um, all possible for your creativity anita good to have you here a local south african in the house wonderful uh, to have you here anita if you haven't visited my website please head over there there are resources for artists i have a regular podcast and then i have a course the working artist that goes uh, live every year for 12 weeks starting in march that's in 2022 we have finished this year's course but that's an exciting place where we get together and really hone in on structures around your creativity building your business and of course, you're part of this community. This is a space for you, for us to connect. Please share your art. Please share you know, your experiences. If you have an amazing app that you found to make mock-ups for your website, or you have a tip about uh, some uh, kind of resource, share it in the group because we really do need each other. We can't do it alone. That's why it's called help. I am artist community. That's one little word, four letters that I found artists have quite a hard time saying. It's the word help. We do need each other and it's so much more fun and inspiring and lovely doing it together. So use that word, help, <laughs> share, ask, the community is there. We are in the middle of a session in the month of June. I try and structure sessions uh, throughout uh, the year around certain themes or a series. And we're in the middle of a series all about email communication. How do you use emails? First of all, getting your head around that emails are good, that you're not spamming or, you know, of course you could be if you're not write the, writing the right emails, but using it really intentionally and carefully to connect with potential buyers, with your audience, with uh, growing your community. And uh, there's a lot to uh, look at when it comes to email communication. It's one of the pillars of my course. It's a pillar of my business. It's made a huge difference. We've looked at the power of email communication. If you've missed that session, they're all here in the Facebook community. So go and have a listen. You'll find it here in the feed. The anatomy of an effective email. How can you set up and write emails? And this week, super exciting. We're going to look at three emails you can't afford not to send to your art audience. Very specific. Emails all have different goals and how you place your wording or some other content all add to the experience that people have when they receive your bing email. <laughs> so that's what we'll look at uh, in this session. Last week in this uh, community, I asked you to reach out to research three brands or three artists that you really admire, that inspire you, and join their email list. Please give me a yes uh, in the comments if you have uh, joined an email list of another artist or another brand that you really enjoy. And have you received any exciting, inspiring emails? Did you see something that worked, that really excited you, something that you can implement in your own 
art business email structure, then I'd love to know. Just please add it to the comments. <clears throat> hey, Ayel, good to have you here. Welcome to the session. And thank you guys and Maja, good to uh, see you here in the session. Um, please add, you know, as you are generously all sharing your, um, what kind of art you're making and what, uh, I know where you're from and where we can find you. That's always good. Also, when people are watching the replay, they can go and see who is in this community. So thank you for sharing that. And uh, Maja says, yes, <laughs> she sent an email and ditto as well. I have, but haven't received uh, any newsletters yet. Please uh, keep us up to par, make screenshots or share if you come across any emails that have been inspiring for you and just to see how people write and how they communicate and do you, can you see a correlation between their art, or you can see their gallery, or you can see their art feed and the words that they're using, their tone of voice and how they're structuring their wording. Does it, can you, does it resonate with you? Can you relate to that? So that's always good to have a look at uh, different uh, artists and brands, creative brands, and see how they're doing their email communication. Hi, Marcia. Good to have you in the house. Thank you for joining the session. And Jasper Krabbe doesn't have an email list. Send him a little tip, <laughs> did I? <laughs> and ask him, you'd love to hear from him, but uh, maybe uh, you can um, you know, get him to spark his inspiration to uh, to get that going because it's just a deeper way of communicating than on a social feed. Everything's flighty, we get very distracted, but it's if you get a wonderfully curated email, it can be such a delight to um, to read through just to stay informed. My just says I subscribe to three newsletters. Very good. Only one sends an automated answer back. Don't you think those are missed chances? It's like you are interested in hearing from uh, somebody and then you hear nothing. It's just like crickets. There's like nothing happening. And there's so much possible now with, you know, if you're using MailChimp, Flowdesk or whatever pro email service provider you're using, you can do an, an automatic email. Thank you for taking the trouble, for subscribing to my email list. This is what you're going to be expecting. Please have a look at this or give a call to action. That's a, a given, at least at the moment, you know, you're excited to join the list and then you can hear something and it can be automated. It doesn't mean you have to sit behind your computer and answer every email. It's all automated. So that's something for you guys, you know, as uh, much was sharing, we can learn from that. Get that autoresponder and write a friendly email so it doesn't look like, you know, it's spam. It's something that is interesting to read and you're showing you're the guide of your information. We looked at that last month with the website. You are the guide of taking people through your content, taking people through your art, taking people through your journey. How, what you know, what does art mean to you? What's important? And you know, showing them the next step. People aren't just going to find them their way. You've got to take them. You are the guide. So it's also with your email communication, that you can show them the way. <laughs> <laughs> And Jan says, yes, I joined Rob de Vries. Uh, his email, Rob is a familiar uh, face uh, to the ones that have done the Working Artist course. And uh, he is also in the alumni. And uh, he sends amazing emails. So if you want to uh, join an email list, look up Rob de Vries, lovely Dutch name, on Instagram. And then uh, look at his website. He's also just renewed his website. He's also in this community. And to join his email list because he really sends uh, inspiring content as uh, Jan was saying. And he has an exhibition. That's right, Jan. Thank you for uh, sharing that. <laughs> Jan is always such a good cheerleader. Uh, thank you uh, for that. Yes, Rob has got an exhibition opening on Saturday with his new work. All the exhibitions were postponed uh, last year. Finally, this exhibition is happening in North, North Holland, the north of uh, the Netherlands. Above Amsterdam, he's going to be having an exhibition. So if you want to find out more about that, join Rob's email list. But maybe this is something that you can look at also the coming weeks, join email lists, people that inspire you, see what's working, what's not, and what can you glean from that. Throughout the year, we've been looking at different strategies and a strategy is something that you do intentionally to connect with your art audience. It really is a myth that your art is going to magically sell itself, that it's magically going to, you know, draw someone's attention. It does sometimes, 
but that's an overcrowded place. There are many, many, many artists, as you might have noticed. And it's for you to do very intentional steps of building relationship. Because sales is all about relationship. Your art is all about relationship, connecting with your art audience and building a relationship. You can do that in person, online, through your social channels, but definitely through email. And that's why I'm just such a enthusiast for this uh, strategy because it really works and that you end up right there in the inbox where it's a little bit more curated you can give them more the gallery experience you can take them where you want people to go now there are three different emails kinds of emails that should be part of your art business strategy that you should be regularly sending if you're going from being an emerging artist to an experienced artist and i know we all at different levels if you're just starting out, maybe one or two of these strategies are important for you. And as you grow, develop, become more um, uh, established, you will add more email strategies to your business. Important, we looked at this last week, every email has a goal. It's not just like, okay, I'm writing a newsletter. <laughs> Thank goodness that's over. Send, gone. No, every email is a specific goal. Be clear about why you're sending something, what is important, what questions you need to ask when you're sending that email. The given one is, why am I sending this email? It's because Sonia said so and I need to send regular emails or everyone is doing it, I should be doing it. No, those aren't good reasons. You need to get really clear about what is it, where are you in your creative cycle? Where are you? Are you building up towards a launch? Or do you have a new body of work coming out? Do you have that quick release that you want to bring under someone's attention? Do you have a workshop coming up or an opening happening? It's good to get your calendar clear. That's where it all starts. Clarity about your creative year. Where are things happening and what? And so that you can align your communication with your calendar so that you can plan ahead and say, this is email because I want to keep, you know, have engagements. I want to welcome new people. So, Every email has a goal. Why are you sending that email? Then what is the most important thing that you want people to remember when they get the email? What's the, the core of your email? What is it that you want to communicate? And who are you talking to? You know, you're sending a pitch email to an editor of a magazine is a different person than someone that has already bought a painting from you. So also really knowing the tone of voice for an email is important. So get clear about who you're talking to because that will uh, determine the wording, the structure, the flow of information. And then what do you want to get out of the conversation? Good emails always ask interaction. Little tip, because maybe someone has just joined your email list, it could be that your emails are going into their spam. So what I really would advise you is to ask questions in your emails because then people respond to your email and then the spam realizes, oh, there's a conversation and you don't end up hiding there in the spam. So it's good to have interaction. What action do you want people to take? Whether that you can just have a very simple, you know, question that you could ask people about your work or about a title, about, you know, something coming up or about their challenge or why would they, uh, why would they surround themselves with art? Just a question that is relevant for your community. Now, there's different whys about uh, emails. We're going to be looking at a few of those uh, during the session. They're there to inform us, to build engagement, asking those questions with your um, audience for inspiration, promotion, building connection. So there are many, many reasons. For those people that are sending emails, just uh, quickly write in the comments what kind of emails are you sending the most. I know some of you are busy setting up an email list. Some of you have been sending regular emails. What is your biggest why? Why are you sending your emails? What, what is it that you want to achieve? So just quickly in the comments, write your why. So if you've been sending, whether that's once a quarter, once a year or every week, what is the why, the biggest reason why you are sending emails? Or maybe the biggest reason why you want to send your emails. Share that in the comments. I'd love to hear. And also, if you're watching the replay, the commentary is still there. You can use, you know, please share because I 
do go back and read everything. <laughs> and I know people go back and read everything. So Lila says for an upcoming exhibition or new work on a website, new work. So it's really informing people about something new coming up. Building up a network, yes, says. So that's that connection, building connection with your art audience. Very good. Make sure, guys, what just says information, that you're adding conversation, adding this, that call to action button, that you are asking people for a response so that you keep that connection, whether that's an information email or a sales email, have that conversation. Yael says, invitation to a new exhibition. Kusum, hello. <laughs> I haven't uh, welcomed you yet. I'm not too convinced about it, but I don't know how to start. I'd love to know, because I'm not too convinced about it. Can you just elaborate a little bit? What are you not too convinced about? The using emails or uh, what uh, please share. Uh, then I would also really like to invite you to watch the first session. We looked at the power of email communication. I totally understand there's an apprehension for sending emails because you you know you might feel that you're invading someone's space that you are you know or being a nuisance or that you're spamming people and this is a sensitive place people's inbox are sacred places and you know that you have to really honor and respect that space you have to make it worth their while the customer if you can just add why you have that in, um, apprehension uh, what you're not too uh, convinced about then we can have a look at that there are two main categories when it comes to sending an email. There's the email that will lead to a sale, and then there's emails that don't lead to sales. So a very distinct two main categories of that are very distinct and very different to each other. These are just some examples of emails that could lead to sales. So a sales email, or you have some special offering or something special that's uh, happening, that would be a sales leading to a sale or a sneak peek that could be motivated because you want it to see you in the sales um, part of your marketing straight strategy, your plan. Now there's an upcoming release or an event that you know, okay, I'm going to have a new body of work. It's going live in the end of July. You already are informing people about it and that maybe the people on your mailing list will get a special discount for that collection. So you may give them a special experience that they already can, can buy something before the, you know, it opens up for the larger public or for your social media followers following or a quick release. Maybe you have some cards that you've printed from your latest uh, body of work, your paintings. And you want to, by the end, you know, three emails that you'll be sending because the end of the week, um, you're going to be releasing that a small, not too expensive uh, body of work through reproductions. Information about products, sharing testimonials. Testimonials are wonderful things that you can use that people have spoken about, about your art. It's important to keep those testimonies if you get... Um, uh, emails from people, if people have been telling you in person at an exhibition and they have words, you say, oh, can I write that down or please jot that down on a piece of paper? Do you mind that I could use it? And 99% of people are only too happy to help you. They know that you have a tough profession and they are willing, if they are you know, a fan of your work, they are willing to help. Just get those testimonials on paper and you can use them as part of a sales email. There's a new listing in your shop, special offers, a follow-up email, because very often maybe you have launched a collection and then there's so much of a win to have that follow-up email because not everyone sees the email, not everyone is you know, always engaging with your content and by sending that follow-up really helps to get the, remind them that it's still possible and that you can offer them something, an upsell. I'm just thinking of a workshop, for example, that you've sent an email that you have given a workshop. So the workshop is finished, people have enjoyed, you've collected testimonials, maybe you've taken a little video at the end of your workshop or at the end of your exhibition. And then you say, if you want a catalog, then you have, you know, send a follow-up email, thank you for being there, thank you for supporting what I'm doing. I also have a catalog of 
um, this exhibition. And because you were there, you can get it for 50% uh, less or 20% less or whatever you make a nice op offer. And that is an upsell. So that means that you are adding to that experience that they've had with you in person or online. You're giving them something extra. For a workshop, you're giving them, you know, an extra a challenge, extra worksheets, some extra, maybe a, a, a live session with you. You are doing an upsell. Wonderful sales email that you can send. And then I've added that abandoned cart. If you have an, a, a shop system, Shopify or other shop systems on your shopping system, on your e, um, website, you have statistics. And you can see exactly who's been in the cart, who has pressed the button, but hasn't gone in, onto a sale. And you can send them retargeting emails and saying, I see that you haven't completed your sale. Do it friendly, don't spam. You don't have to you know, sound like a machine, just sound like a person. Uh, can I help you with something? Maybe their credit card didn't work. Maybe they were distracted. Maybe they weren't quite sure you know, what to, um, uh, how to finish that sale. It could be so many reasons, or they had second thoughts. Am I really gonna get it? Is this legit? And by just sending that follow-up email, after they have abandoned their shopping cart, you can really take away apprehensions. So these are wonderful sales emails that you could be sending. Now, there are also those emails in the second category about that are not leading to sales. Just introduce yourself. This should be the first email that you send your art audience once they join your list. You send them that auto <laughs> automated email telling people about yourself. So they just understand you know, more about you, your vision, why you're making your art, why you're passionate about the things that you're doing and show them around. Uh, you know what's possible if you have a blog tell them if you have uh, your social channels where they can follow you tell them that that's an introduction email and there should be like a welcome se sequence so you can automate this if you have an email service provider you can automate a few emails and that's called a welcome sequence so that's just something for you to think about you can all automate that what is you want people to know and how can you divide that into certain emails that are automated when they join your email list so they can know more about you, so they can find their way. And that you can share your vision and your art, of course, when you are have a new body of work, when you are happy sharing your process. This is all not directly leading to a sale, but you're inspiring, you're informing and connecting. You can share testimonials of past buyers or people that have been in your workshops. You can share about a new blog or a new post, or maybe you have something new on Instagram or on your social feed or on LinkedIn, wherever you are. Send an email and say, please head over to my Instagram. I have this new uh, beautiful uh, artwork that I've just finished. I'm so happy to share it with you because not everyone will see it on your social feed, but just giving them and put the link there, you can take them to your Instagram. So use your emails too to engage on your other channels maybe a new resource out we have a free download like our ditto <laughs> she had that download she still has uh, of her pop art she made two wallpapers that people could download so head over to ditto's website if you want to download and see how she did that um, to as a gift for people that have joined her email list so in exchange you give them something as a gift and they will be reminded as they open their phone they see the wallpaper and they say, wow, oh, ditto. And all of you guys can do that. Make a PDF of, with the right dimensions for a phone and you can add that to uh, an opt-in form. And that we'll be talking about next week, how to grow your email list. And this is a part of the strategy. So you can have a free download or you can share the story or you send them that beautiful thank you email there's nothing more powerful and if someone has been to your exhibition or they've taken the trouble to come to your studio or you know there's been interaction maybe you've pitched your work send a thank you because so many people don't take the trouble and you really will you know uh, spring to mind if people see just to communicate just be generous and uh, just have the, when you have the standard emails all done it doesn't have to you know talk, you have to think up emails all the time you have a sort of a uh, an archive of your emails that you can copy paste and just make it relevant but that thank you email is very powerful just quickly uh, completing the list of non-sales emails um, informing about an event a workshop the customer service emails 
And I think the more you guys are going to be selling online, the more you're going to be also needing that customer service. Where is my uh, postcard uh, set that I ordered last week? Or, you know, why am I not uh, getting it? Uh, or this is the wrong one. Or this is not quite what I expected. Or it arrived with a little bit of a, a corners were bent. These are all customer service emails. These are also, you know, part of running an art business. Pitching for commissions. We will look a little closer at pitching emails, invitations to events, newsletters, inquiries, surveys. This is also an email that you could be sending after an event. You can ask people how people, you know, ask them how they experienced an event and sending a confirmation email. Also something that you can automate. Someone has bought something from you, you send them confirmation. Thank you very much. Uh, we are working on your order. Um, if you have any questions. So there are many different shapes and sizes. Please be aware, you know, as you are uh, getting into the possibilities of emails, being aware of the different kinds of emails and just take a note of them or take screenshots of ones that really appeal to you and find out why and discover your tone of voice of how you want to communicate with your art audience. Last week, we looked at the anatomy of an email. There's a different structure that makes an email worth reading and not worth reading. We looked at the header, which is the subject. Spend more time in your subject than the body, because that's where people will decide whether they're going to be opening it or not. The body, very important. That is the, you know, the deer or the two, or and then what you're going to be writing in the body of the email. Then we have the footer of the email, which is the, your signature, which many, many artists forget. It's like you can really add an interesting signature which is part of your branding, which is your contact details, where you want people to go, put that in your signature piece of your art and, you know, some kind of interesting um, scribble or uh, illustration that really shows who you are. And then using that PS, people read the subject and people read the PS. And if you can have that sort of the core of what you're trying to say with a link, call to action, some kind of interaction, PSs are very powerful always adding that call to action some way. So the subject, the body, the signature, the PS. So no matter what, if it's a sales email or it's a, an email not sending to a, not leading to a sale, these are important parts of your emails. Um, for the rest of the session, I want to look at three distinct emails, the information email, the sales email, and the pitch email. And these should be part of your collection archive of emails that you should be sending regularly. The focus is more on the information email. So you'll be sending far more information emails than sales emails because you don't want to be selling all the time. People will get really maybe fed up and irritated if with every email that you're sending, you're trying to sell something. So you have to sprinkle it. You have to be wise of how you sprinkle that information. You want to inspire, inform, uh, educate, you know, there's different reasons for sending that email. Let's look at those emails that don't lead to sales first, so the information emails, the inspirational emails. How are you going to structure the body, the subject, the signature, and the PS of that email? Because that's distinctly different than when you are sending a sales email. This in a diagram I've put uh, for you, just to illustrate, of this non-sales email. So it's an information email. You start your email with the what. And you build out to the why. You are, you know, going to tell them about an event. You're going to tell them about something new coming up. So you're going to start with the what. Start with the most important information. What is it that you want to reach through your information email? And of course, it starts with the subject. So think of a subject that clearly states that it's an opening of an exhibition. It's a new body of work. It's something that it's the clear, it's very clear what the subject contains the what. And then you expand for the whys and the hows and the whos. So then you're going to tell them, okay, where is it? What time? All that information, it's how you're going to end off your email. And then you add your PS, your signature, 
with some way, with a button that they can go to your website to read more or they can contact you for more. There's some kind of call to action. So the leading part of the information email is always the what. What is it that you want to communicate? And then you expound on the why. Does this make sense? So this is something for you to think about. And I can tell you, the more you do it, it'll, it's going to get easier. You don't have to, you know, we've said this in the sessions, you don't have to be Pulitzer Prize winner uh, writers to write an email. You're going to write like you're talking. You're sharing instead of, you know, verbally communicating everything, you're sharing it with words. And if you want to send that information email, you're starting with your what. What is it that you want to communicate? And then you're going to expound on the whys. Contrary to the information email, a sales email needs a different structure. The sales email, the subject, the body, the signature, and the PS, the weight is shifted. It's turned around opposite to your information email. With a sales email, you start with a why. You start with the inspiration. You start with motivation. You start with creating desire, with uh, uh, finding words that you're going to take people on a journey till you end off with the what? That you have a new, that you have a new painting that's for sale. You Because this is a sales email and people need to be nurtured. People need to have more of a flow of information to be uh, interested because there's something, an investment they need to make. So it's not as um, open as an information email because that, you know, people can go one way or the other. But with a sales email, you need to invite them into your world. So you start by sketching the, a core problem. You know, also having trouble filling your walls with, uh, with inspiration. No idea what good art is. These are just some uh, subject line because the why you're going to put in your subject. Also staring at blank walls, curious about uh, cold wax, starting with questions, getting into the mind of your potential art buyer. What are they thinking about? It's not about you selling your art. You are going to serve them with an answer to maybe things they are thinking about. Also looking for a gift for, uh, you know, if it's Thanksgiving or for Christmas. Also looking for that perfect gift for a loved one. You are going to reach out and uh, tell them why. Why is your product, your painting, your creativity, why does that matter? Your inspiration. And then you're going to build towards the what. The what, the answer to their question. That is your art. Your art is the in the sale. Your art is the solution. So if you have a product, you're selling um, clothing or scarves or something that you can actually use, get into the mind of your potential art audience. What are they thinking? What do they need? And how can you serve them and offer them the what? And then a wonderful framework to use is the ACA method. It's just like a short um, framework for you to bear in mind what you should uh, think of when you're writing your sales email. First is in the ADCA system is attention. You want to get people's attention, creating interest, desire, conviction, and attention. Maybe you're thinking, yeah, I just want to sell my art. <laughs> How am I going to put this in a, an email? Uh, it's very subtle. It's very, you know, you're not manipulating. You're not, uh, you know, it's not uh, some kind of mind mind warp. It's just information that you want to share, starting with your whys and ending with your whats. You want to get people's attention. And where does it start? We looked at it last week. It's the subject that you're going to be adding to your email. What, how are you going to get someone's attention? They're, they're going to be thinking, you know, just, also be very sensitive to when you are opening emails, what emails you open and what don't, what grabs your attention, what emails would you love to read? 
are you talking to me? That's what people are. So if your art audience is looking for something specific, get their attention by talking to them. Is she talking to me? Is he talking to me? How can you add that to a subject line? So brainstorm uh, different subject lines, not just writing new products. I mean, that's not inspiring. It's not going to get someone's attention. So the A is for attention. The interest is why are you talking to me? So that should be in the body of your email. It's we're starting with the whys. As people read line for line, they're thinking, what's in it for me? Why am I reading this email? Oh, can I relate to this? This is something that's of interest to me. So you want to in create interest through the words that you're using. And then the third one is desire. Do I really need or want this? By sharing your inspiration, sharing why you know it's important to you, what you know, how a certain subject inspired you, or a journey that you've made uh, really uh, struck a chord with you, and why you've made this body of work, or why you've turned it into a fashion collection, or why you are doing what you're doing. People are going to thinking, do I need or do I want this? So it's the desire. Is it something that's desirable for someone? And if you're starting to understand your audience and that you know who you're writing to, you can really um, share this in words so that you're creating that desire in your wording, in your emails. Then there's that conviction, like, yes, it's for me. Wow. And you can do that through your photography. You can do it with a short video. You can do it with you know, adding a mood board of your inspiration or, you know, what they, they must see it on their walls. They must see it, you know, themselves wearing it creating that conviction, yes, I do need it. You know, there's no doubt anymore. I can't do without it. This is a perfect gift for a father's day. It was a perfect gift for a, my friend or, yes, there's that conviction. And then ending off with the action. What action do you want people to take? Head over to my website. Go to my Instagram shop. Go to my uh, online shop or have a point of sale in Rotterdam, Amsterdam, and in Delft. Get specific about what you want people to do. So now they are convinced, yes, this is something that love uh, to buy, to purchase, and where can they go? So that's the ACO, step-by-step, -step, how you can structure a sales email so that you can take them from the why, why is it important, why is it important for them, to the what, this is what it is. I have something that I'd like to, of value that I'd like to um, make your life more valuable. Because that's what selling is. It's an exchange of value. And if you are convinced of your value and uh, how you can share that without feeling salesy, you're not manipulating. And I speak to many artists and they're so afraid of the sales part because it's something that's so personal. It's something that you've made and like now you have to put a price in it and you have to go and sell it. Um, that's why having gallery representation is something so fun because someone else is doing the selling for you. But you really have to get over that um, that uh, uh, maybe a mindset thing that um, you are you know pushy or salesy or that you shouldn't be getting into the mode of sale. But this is so much part of running an art business. You are also in the sales. Sales is part of your business, and once you get um, maybe get to the understanding that you offer value. It's not about the product and about money. It's about value. How does your product, how does your art bring value to someone else's life? You're not selling an art piece. You're selling an experience. You're selling a conversation. You're selling beauty. You're selling, you know, whatever your uh, core values are. That's what you're selling. And you're appealing to people on that level, not just buy an art piece because then it's just about a product. It's not about a product, it's about an experience that your creativity will give to another person. So please just tell me in the comments, does this make sense? It's the big difference between the emails that are not for sales, uh, that starts with the what, so you start with the main piece of information, and then you go to the why. With a sales email, you start with the why, and you end with what. And maybe this is a little bit overwhelming for you, but the more you start reading other people's emails, you start seeing a distinction of how you flow that information and you can start using it very strategic for your art business. So let me know guys, <laughs> how is this, uh, does this make sense?
Does this make sense? Good one, Fabian. <laughs> Hi, Fabian. Good to have you in the community. Let's just talk about this. What kind of a problem does art solve? I can think of a few, but maybe in the community uh, you could. Let's just brainstorm about that. What value does your art bring people? Why do you make art? Why is it important that other people should be engaging with your art? Maitre says in other sales, they talk about their pain, then offering a solution. I guess we talk about value and we bring, instead of pain, we offer value. You know, sometimes it can be a pain not finding uh, the right gift for someone or that you want something, you know, for a wedding or something memorable that you want to share. And so pain is a big word, but maybe it's a, a that you're at a loss of, um, you know, what to hang up on your walls. And if you put yourself, position yourself as an expert that you know, you know, where art looks good or people have the pain of not, of pain, I mean, it's pain is a big word, but also about framing. I get so many questions where people like, you know, great art, but how do I frame it? How do I hang it up? What kind of glass do I put in front of it? Well, how do I uh, light this? You know, is it going to be fading? So there's so many questions that people have about art and art related. Is this a good investment? How can I invest in art? These are all questions that cause uh, concern with potential art buyers. And if you are communicating them with emails and saying, you know, I've got questions for these answers, and you can do a survey with uh, your audience, you know, what is your three questions that you'd love to ask an artist? And you can start talking about that in your email communication and start getting to, you know, the core of what, why people are actually investing in art. And then you can use that in your sales messaging. Um, let's see. So why is art important? Gesin, hello Gesin. Art brings joy and happiness. Yes, I mean, gosh, imagine going through this pandemic that we've all just come out of, hopefully, <laughs> uh, without creativity, without art, without the books, without the music, without the films, even the Netflix without having something good to stare at, without having hope of why you should be fighting for this uh, world, creativity does that, art does that, it shows people what's possible and vision and uh, this is some a gift that you can give people. And not even to talk about all the products that are beautifully printed, I mean imagine having your house without prints, with your mug without something or you know your, your um, deck bed, your either down without a beautiful print or some sort of art expression on it, it really adds to, it adds flavor, it adds color, it adds expression. And art does that, you know, whether it's on a wall or on a print or, you know, a beautifully designed car or a good chair to sit in that doesn't give you a backache. There's so many solutions that creators and artists can bring. Did I said, I painted a portrait of a woman who died at 42. It was an enormous help in their grief. Yeah, so that's also a mem something memorable that you can give, you know, in, uh, uh, grieving um, family members a memory of, uh, of somebody, so of um, consolation. Jess says, uh, most bakers sell their own bread, otherwise they won't have bread themselves. Yeah, good way of looking at it, uh, Jess. Good to get into that place of um, feel, feeling comfortable, that your, worth, your art is worth something, that you really are offering someone value. It's not just a pretty picture. It's not just something that, by the way, I'm making an art. Art is so important. Maybe you've noticed, I get very passionate about this <laughs> because I think, you know, the, People out there understand, but very often artists don't understand this. They don't understand the value that they actually are giving and how important their profession is. And once you are totally infused about the value of the things that you're doing, you'll start pricing your art differently. You'll have a different mindset about selling. You'll be able to work in your studio far more productively. It just has so much to do with self-worth and confidence. 
And once you get more confident, you can start, you know, having that value and offering value. So comfort, I see uh, people saying emotional connection can give hope. I mean, hope. <laughs> what would their life be without hope? What are we fighting for? What are we sharing? And we can, with our creativity, uh, share hope, start conversations. You know, some we don't all have to agree with one another, but we can have conversations. And I've, you know, been at, I love uh, going to uh, galleries and then just standing behind people as they talk about the art. And you have conversations sometimes with strangers about subjects you would never have talked about before because something, some artist has taken the trouble to put something down and that it has sparked some conversation. And, you know, you just get to know people and it's, uh, yeah, just a wonderful way of connecting. So hopefully, uh, Fabian, I don't know, where are you, Fabian? What would you say? Please just add that to the comments, uh, Fabian. If you have, you know, what is your art about? Why are you making your art and what is it of value? And how can it offer meaning to someone's life or to, you know, public spaces? There's so many places where creativity can be shared. And then the third um, email I just want to end off with in the session is a pitch email. And when you're an experienced or emerging artist, sending pitch emails should be part of your artist routine. It's part of your business strategy. Because building a business is not passive. You don't have to wait around for your phone to ring for a commission or for the press to notice you, or for uh, you know connecting for a licensing deal or a collaboration. I mean, there's so many ways that you can take initiative. And sending a pitch email, even connecting with a gallery. If you listen to that uh, podcast with David van der Linde, who's a gallerist from the south of the Netherlands, nearly every day he gets emails from potential artists that potentially want to exhibit in their gallery. Some emails get their attention, the gallerist's attention, some don't. And David shares in the podcast also about, you know, what you need to consider. So sending a pitch email can make, make a huge difference in your business as you grow. So I tell my uh, artists that are in my um, course and also in my mentoring program, they should be sending at least two or three pitch emails a month actively pursuing pitching, pitching their work. And there's different kinds of pitch emails that you could be setting up, being aware of that you can start reaching out. Think of open calls. There are many, many platforms where you can um, pitch for an open call or for potential commissions or for licensing deals. Contact with the press. Maybe you have something coming up in exhibition contact your press, your local press. That's like the low hanging fruit in your community. Every community has local TV, local radio, local newspapers. And so you can start there and just send them a short pitch email, which we'll look at in a moment, <laughs> to connect. They're not gonna just know about you by chance. You can actively start to connect with them. Collaboration may be looking for funding. So there's, these are all different reasons for a pitch email. This is Monica Mayer. She's part of my um, uh, alumni of the Working Artists course and also in my mentoring program. And Monica has, uh, she makes amazing art. She's committed and uh, is really making beautiful um, stone art. She's from the south of Germany. And Monica, a few weeks ago, responded to an open call. Been teaching my uh, artists in my course also about communicating, not only with the art but word, with words how do you write your artist statement how do you put words to that what you're passionate about because it really helps if you have an open call and you need to write an email because that's how you need to present yourself you can't fly over there they don't always see you in person it's those words that are going to matter so she um, saw that there was an open call for a competition in spain in barcelona <laughs> and she sent an email and she said, because I had been working through my words and I understood, you know, what my work was about, it was easy for her to uh, write this pitch email. And she submitted her open call 
uh, information. She could write about her art short and brief, you know, briefly share about her vision, about why, you know, she should be part of this uh, uh, competition. And today, Monica is flying to Barcelona. As we speak, I had contact with Monica this morning, and she is heading to Barcelona today. And tomorrow is the opening of an exhibition with all kinds of sculptors from all over, I don't know if it's Europe or the planet. Um, but she won second prize. Now, imagine if Monica didn't send that pitch email. They wouldn't have just guessed that she was there. She took initiative. And because it was well written, she is, you know, a, a, amazing artist she really hones her craft she's skilled in what she's doing she made a wonderful presentation they now have seen her work and she can give a presentation there um, tomorrow and for you know for the next few weeks it's going to be exhibited that's how you enlarge and grow as a working artist so please head over to monica's instagram account and please wish her well she is on her way to barcelona this afternoon she will be there uh, for a few days and uh, she could use our support so monica mayer sculptor that's where you can find her on instagram and just send a message i hear you on your way to barcelona good luck and then follow her and uh, you know just look at her beautiful art and it was because of an open call writing that pitch email and you can use the subject the body the signature and your ps to have those pitch emails some pitch emails, do's and don'ts. Does your online presence represent you in the best possible way? Because you're pitching, say you're pitching to the press, you're pitching for a commission, you're pitching for a licensing deal or you know some kind of collaboration. People are going to go to your website. They're going to look at your Insta feed. They're going to see, you know, does all the words that you're saying in your pitch, does it match? So make sure you're, you're ready to send your pitch email so that it's validated. So that people can see, yeah, I can understand this is uh, something that would be sit fitting or suited. So make sure your social is up to par. And then do your homework. If you're sending a pitch email to the press, for example, for a press release, or you want to be part of some kind of collaboration, who are you sending the email to? So do your homework on uh, LinkedIn or ask around, who can you address your pitch email to? Use that subject line. Make sure your subject line gets their attention. Remember, that's the first part, attention. Use inspiring words that you would, you're inspiring them to open up your email. So it's not newsletter or, you know, just think of things, brainstorm, uh, inspiring subject lines, ask a question so that you're getting people intrigued to take that next step to open the email. Then the body of your pitch email, tell them why you're writing to them. So you've done your research, you found out about the company, you found out about the, you know, the what this magazine is writing about, you're finding out about the gallery, does it fit to you, and why are you writing to them? Start with a compliment. Maybe you've been following a magazine or a shop or a gallery for many years. Maybe you went to visit there last year and just start with a compliment. Why do you see yourself, you know, um, fitting there. So start with a compliment. Then briefly introduce yourself and your art, your who you are and what you're doing, and then what inspires you. Why are you making your art and your vision? I want to tell you that most, um, I've worked in media for many, many years, I received a lot of uh, pictures, a lot of uh, emails, and the, the emails that, or the pictures that bear in mind, or that stayed in mind with the confident pictures, the pictures where artists were just totally convinced and enthusiastic and passionate about the things that they were doing. And that's the same if you're going for a licensing deal. They're looking for confidence. They want to know whether they can trust you to pull your weight. You know, you're going to show up for the interview. Are you going to deliver the goods? Are you going to, you know, is it validated? So writing in a place of confidence is important. Why? What is your vision? Have something to say. Then direct them to your website if they want to know more about you. Please head over to my website. I have my latest collection there. Or look here and here and here. Or have a look here and here and here on my Insta feed. You're directing them somewhere. And then leave a room to ask a question. So ask them a question so that there can be a conversation. So it's not a closed email. It's open. So that you can add maybe a call to action so that they are you know, going to take um, a step. 
then the attachment you can add relevant images so don't add like a whole you know uh, all the images of high resolution that it takes forever to open you curate because but they're also looking for confident artists, you know, depending on where you're pitching to, that you've curated, you've made choices. These are like two images that show what I do, or you're making a mock-up. Maybe you're going for a licensing deal for a certain product, and you have taken the trouble to make a mock-up of a certain your images on something so that they can see, hmm, you've taken, you know, you've got taken that extra step. And then add your signature with your contact details, and then end off with a PS. Just a reminder. No, you know, you can phone me here or head over here or so just subject, body, signature, PS. Short, sweet, people don't have time to read whole, you know, books. Keep your email short and sweet, especially for your pitch email. Have a look at emails, guys. They're all, all different shapes and sizes. There's the good, the bad, and the beautiful. We're all in a learning curve. This will make a huge difference in your business. When you start understanding the different kinds of emails, how to structure emails, how to find words, you know, how you can reach out, not passive, but actively pursuing a working artist's life, this can make a huge difference. So, see, you know, if something that you want to do in the future, start getting a plan together of how you can use emails to connect with your art audience. Make it worth their while. Next week, we're going to be looking at building your list. So how do you get people onto your email list? How, where do you start? And an opt-in form, you all know them, <laughs> a pop-up maybe, or you know, some kind of form on a website or a competition that you have seen somewhere or somewhere in Instagram that you, people are inviting you to join their email list. There are many ways that you can build an email list, not just anyone, but your art audience so that you can start communicating with your community, with people that are invested and interested to follow you. So that is next week. Hopefully you'll be, uh, be joining me for that, uh, how you can start building your email list. Um, and I just want to ask, you know, if you have any questions, please throw them in the group. Um, we can all learn from one another. We're all on this journey. Let me know if um, you have any questions. Thank you for everyone for showing up. So it's good to, uh, to have you here. Let's see. Fabian, thank you for sharing. I do Polaroid art, share in the community, please. I want to show the, the truth and beauty. I studied art history and philosophy to find the truth. That's why I say my art is real art, because I produce art not for decoration, but to reflect the truth, which is amazing. So that is why you are making your art. We are all different. We all have different whys. And you are searching for truth, philosophy. You know, the, your audience would be those people that are also looking for truth. And your art can help them on their journey. So that's your big why. And that's your big, you know, how you communicate also through your emails, um, showing them your world, inspiring people maybe to look past the cover and look further and to uh, go on that uh, journey with you because there are many people like you out there and uh, you can start connecting with them. So thank you for sharing, Fabian. Well, let's keep the conversation going also in the community. If there's anything uh, that you'd like to add, then use that comment area, as I said, that would stay active. Next week, we'll be here for uh, how you're going to grow your email list.